What is up guys? I am going to be doing a um, video today showing you all um, how I created these short um, almond round slash nails today. Um, I recently hurt my finger. I don't know if you guys saw my post, but I was trying to remove the bling from my nail and um, it literally snapped my nail in half. I must have had it a little too thin um, in the apex because it literally snapped in half and it broke across my nail bed. So I am doing a short set of nails on myself because I can't stand to not have any nails on. So I am going to be sculpting these nails. Um, I'm going to be using just these regular um, cheap nail forms or yeah nail forms from Amazon um, because I'm doing short nails so I'm just taking the form I am wiggling it a little bit so that we can get that nice round curve to the nail um, so it's not flat because when it's short you don't want a flat nail or it will look absolutely stupid so um, I am closing I put the tab on the back as you can see I am closing the tip of it which let me tell you these forms do not like to stay closed so I'm going to make sure that it's even first of all because when you're sculpting you always want your form to be closed evenly because if it's not it's going to lean one side to the other um, and it's not going to be cute so I am closing that I am making sure that the form is going straight out from my finger you don't want it face down like this and you don't want it tilted up like this if you want it tilted up like this you're going to get like a Russian almond shape if you have it tilted down like this, you're going to have an extremely curved nail. So since I'm doing short nails, I am just trying to make sure that it's straight. And also um, my ring fingers grow a little bit crooked. So I always make sure and kind of overcompensate for that. Um, I always try to make sure that the, the um, nail form is going in the opposite direction that the curve grows in so I am making sure that that's tightly closed even though I can feel it starting to come apart already um, I am also uh, making sure to close the back a little bit right here um, because it definitely um, is important if you leave that open um, it will make your form wide and it will also make it come off so I'm just making sure that that is in the direction I want it to be going still and I'm tightly closing it okay so I've already prepped my nails I've already removed all the cuticle I already went around with cuticle bits I exfoliated the cuticle I applied a really thin layer of clear acrylic um, when I took my nails off because I did not sorry I did not want them um, getting broken or like bending or whatever because I have not been the best at keeping my nails healthy while wearing nails so I just wanted to hop on and show you guys how I do this so I am using some acrylic that I mixed myself um, it's all from me a secret the nude collection and I'm also using Glam and Glitz Monomer, which I got from Sam's Nail Supply, and it um, was a lot cheaper than if I would have bought it from the Tammy Taylor website. So you guys saw, I put my brush in, I wiped off one side, I flipped it over, I went into the powder, I held it there for a minute, and then when I came up, I... I put my bead on the form and then I um, pressed it down for like one or two seconds and then it released easily from 
the form, I mean from the brush. So as you can see, the form is popping open again. That's why I don't like using this these kind of forms. Um, but I'm just placing the bead right where the natural nail ends and I am blending it into the natural nail so that it, it creates a good bond. Now since I already have um, some clear on my nail, I do not have to worry about the adhesion. Um, if you are trying to build nude nails, you always want to make sure and put a clear base down first because if you do not, it will lift. Um, now I know that there's like core colors and stuff that you can use from like Young Nails and places like that that are supposedly um, good enough without the clear. However, I still feel like they kind of lift even though they say that they are core color. Um, yeah, a core color and you don't have to mix it with clear or put clear down um, that the strength is there it's not just a pigment powder which is what core means so yes you can do that and yes I know my shape is not perfect but what I was just trying to do is create like a square nail um, and then I'm going to go in and file it into the round shape because what I've been doing with the other ones is just putting um, the acrylic on in a square shape and then um, filing the underneath like you would a Russian almond and then also um, and then also rounding out the edges so that it has that nice round underbelly or whatever you would call it I don't know what you would call it but in a situation like this where I am close to the cuticle I always hold my finger facing down so that the product does not run in my cuticle. So here, I am gently pressing, trying to get that smooth. Also, the more you pinch your form, the more pinched your nails are going to be. So if you want that um, strength and you want that roundness underneath, you want to keep your forms pinched. Okay, so now I need a little bit more, which I cannot really see. So I'm going to place it right here in the middle where my apex should be. I'm going to lightly bring it back. So what I'm doing here is I am blending the front of the bead down while also pressing the top of the bead up like this. Um, that helps out tremendously when you're trying to blend the beads together when you're doing nudes and um, full color acrylic nails. So I see that there is a empty spot over here so I'm going to go ahead and add some more acrylic. And yes, my nails are two different colors because I could not figure out which one was a good color for my skin tone so I did my thumb and first finger this beautiful shimmery nude and I'm going to do my I did my middle finger and this finger obviously in the lighter nude and then I'm going to do my pinky in the darker nude with the shimmer in it so I can see that no one is watching me again, which is okay because I can still post this video on my page and you all will see it.
but see how I'm facing my finger down you guys that is very important when you're a beginner you don't necessarily have to hold it like this like facing you but just when you do it like hold it down like this that way you don't have to worry about it going up in the cuticle and yes I know this looks like a hot mess it's a very chunky nail but that's okay because it's going to look like that when I'm finished so let's move on to the pinky also another thing that helps with that roundness underneath and I know I said the more pinched your form is the more pinched your nail is going to be that is true however I would definitely pinch the nail with your pinching tool it's funny because even though I have a broken nail I still want to have nails on so I'm going to do my nails with these short little nude nails and as you guys can see I'm pinching the nail right here I'm putting the pinching tool on right at the edges of where my natural nail and the extension meet because that is where the wideness comes from okay so see how it went up a little bit that was just because the top layer was not dry I did not want to wait until I did not want to wait until um, that dried because the under part was already drying and I didn't want to miss the time to pinch because you only have about a minute or two before the pinching time is over. I don't know if that's any better for you guys to see. Hopefully it is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the pinky nail and since I used this form, but yet it's clean. I'm going to go ahead and use it again. Actually, no, I'm not. Because it's going to fall off my nail. Okay. This time we're going to be using the Shimmer Nude. That's a little darker. But, that is okay because... It's going to be nice okay so as you can see how I fitted the form I pinched the front I put it under my nail as snugly as I could now I am pinching the underside of the form see how there's a part that's up back here that's how you know let me hold my finger finger straight see how it's coming straight out that's how you know that it's in the right position and then you should just put those stuck to your finger you should close that maybe fold it down if you want that's what I do um, but then I just pinch the form together so as you can see it's straight and it's going to create the nail that I want now I'm going to be using this one which like I said is the shimmery nude so let's get that out of here and let's add the acrylic. Okay, one, two, three, boom. See how it just released? There was nothing on my brush, see? Now, you actually even want to let it sit for a second when you get it on there. If your ratio is right, you should be able to just let it set right on the nail or on the form or whatever before you start playing with it because it's going to kind of make it into like Play-Doh, if, if I can say Play-Doh while talking about acrylic. But um, 
it's going to make it into like a play-doh consistency so that you can actually form it the way you want now that bead was kind of big it was kind of thick so as you can see I'm going to brush it down and then I'm going to use my brush to thin it out at the end that way I can just either clip it off or I can just file it and it will be easy to file. Okay. And yes, I've been trying to get better at my one or two bead application. Now I'm just trying to blend the front of that bead down into the other part that I had already laid because I want there to be no transition between the two. We're not trying to do an ombre here. And as you can see, that's way too thick. See? That's way too thick. But that's okay. Like I said, I am practicing my one bead application here. Okie dokie. So, the things you need to most worry about is your cuticle. And making sure that there is no product on the skin, you guys. That is the most important thing. If you do not want lifting, you have to make sure that there is no product on the skin. So this right here is bad. See how I have that? That is not good. This side isn't too bad. It actually goes up. But that's okay because we can file that out of there. And I don't think I'm going to be using the nail all the way down here, but I'm going to go ahead and fill that in anyways just to make sure that everything is good and solid. Okay, now, yeah. I was just feeling the nail. Pinching tool on. And we are going to set it here for a minute. I am very sorry. Hello, everybody. Hi. I know there's only one person watching now, but I appreciate everybody who stopped by. It really is crappy that. You can't see the comments and stuff from when you're actually filming the live. All of that stuff gets deleted. So, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Okay. So, you guys saw how wide and, like, bulky that looked before. And now that I've pinched it, yeah, it still looks too thick, obviously. But, it's looking thinner, right? It's looking thinner as far as being too wide. So, I can still feel the heat from the acrylic, which means it is not completely set up yet. It's 
so my idea was to do chrome um, ombre on the lighter nude nails, which are these two. But I'm thinking about doing like that doodle design. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I was thinking about doing the doodle design where you um, just like draw a line like this, like this, and make a pretty design out of it with your um, colored gel polishes. So. So as you can see, the nails are nice and round underneath. That's what we wanted. Now I am going to close up my monomer. And I'm going to close up my nude powders. I already cleaned out my brush, as you guys saw. And I bought these little, these little welcome things for like keys and stuff to hang like by your front door, but they work perfect for holding my brushes, as you can see. And the reason why I did that is because when you lay your brush, um, like upside down with the bristles up, it's going to make the monomer go down onto the handle and it's going to either melt the handle if it's plastic or if it's wood and it has varnish or like finish on it, it's going to take that right off. So I, um, I got that and it seems like I haven't really been having any problems with that. So I am going to cover up my other nudes that I have open right now and I am not clear capping these nails because I mixed the powder together myself and I'm pretty sure that it's going to be strong enough to not break because I um, because I put clear in it So, when I'm filing an almond short nail, I take it and I file the sides just like you would normally do. Almost like if you were filing a square shape. Then, the first one, I kind of went like this and filed like at a diagonal angle, but it looks like this one's going to need a little bit more care. And when you're filing a nail, sorry guys, a nail into shape like this, you want to use your hand file. Now if you're doing like a long nail or something, um, you could probably use your e-file to do the shaping of the edges and stuff, but like for doing a short nail like this, I don't think that's a good idea. You might hurt yourself. I guess I should say I might hurt myself. Because as you guys know, if you've done any kind of nails, doing nails on yourself, in my opinion, is one of the hardest things. Because when you're doing nails on someone else, you can actually hold their finger straight in front of you and 
actually do it properly without having to turn your finger like all these crazy ways. Okay, now I'm just filing over the top, making sure everything is blended in together. I don't have any lumps or bumps. As you can see, the shape is coming along. Now, it needs to be a little bit thinner because it's more of an almond than a round. And don't worry about the bumpiness because I can see that it's not even. But I will file it with the e-file to fix that. I just like getting my shape, my edges good, and my shape good before I start using the e-file on short nails. upwards on the diagonal position almost like I'm doing a Russian almond like I said before Making sure if there's any skin or any acrylic touching the skin, I guess I should say. You need to make sure and pull that away. can't tell but when I'm holding my finger like this I am stabilizing that nail the same with this one if I'm holding it like this I'm stabilizing the nail First off, I'm going to start off with this bit. 
Actually, I'm not. I am going to start off with this. Now, I got a set of drill bits um, with a drill that I purchased a long time ago. And it came with a big pack like this of like 20 bits. Um, and they were all free. Now, they weren't the best. They were kind of generic. But I have figured out that they actually aren't bad. Because I have recently went in and pulled some of those out. And they work just as good as the other ones. So I'm taking this bit because it's it's like has a flat edge and I'm going around my cuticle. Okay, that one needs a little bit more filing on the thickness. So, none of that product is on the cuticle. As you can see, there is a gap between the cuticle, the natural nail, and the uh, um, acrylic nail. Okay, now, I am going to get out my um, Dremel bit, I think is what it's called, I'm not really sure. I'm going to get out my fine sanding band. Place it 
this away. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to put it on about 10,000 RPMs. Because since the nails are short, and I was watching a young nail video over the weekend, and Tracy um, said that you should not make your nail more than the length of your nail bed. So when your nail is a short nail that barely goes past the length of your nail bed, you do not need to have a big whopping apex. So if you have short nails, your nails should be pretty flat. Not completely flat, but pretty flat. There we go. I'm actually going to shorten this one down a bit. We didn't need it that long. Okay, there we go. Now, let's hope and pray that I throw then enough clear acrylic to actually to actually keep these strong enough so that they do not break. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm using my Melody Susie Scarlet Nail Drill. Do you guys, I don't know if you know that or not. 
or needed to know. Okay, so we are going to dust these bad boys off. Show you what they look like. Show you what they look like underneath. They'll look nice and round. They have those sides to keep the structure sound so that we don't have any breaks. Because if you have flat nails, you guys, which is what happened on my ring finger, I thought because I was putting on bling and that I was using the um, hard gel that it would be strong enough to keep my nail from breaking. Well, it was not. And I'm just kind of glad that it broke at home. Because if I would have been out somewhere and it broke like that, oh my goodness, that would have been terrible. So now I'm just going back over and finish filing the rough edges and the filing marks. Dust them off. Really good. Hmm. Okie dokie. <sighs> Alright, now here's what I do next. Take, I spray my fingers all over. Even underneath, I get a cotton round or a paper towel. But I like the cotton rounds, and I know like they leave little pieces of cotton behind. Um, but I like using these because it seems like they really grab the dust. Um, but actually, I'm not done with the dust. So now I'm going to take my buffer. For model ones it's got a 100 180 grit side of this so now I'm just going to take it and file out the scratches this does not hurt at all you guys it feels like rubber very soft so you don't have to worry about hitting the skin or anything like that
Okay, now I am going to top coat. I'm going to top coat the nails that are the um, shimmery ones. Which I'm sure you guys cannot see because my lighting is crap. My apologies on that. I did buy a ring light that I will be receiving um, in a few days. So I'm just going to cure the thumb. And to be honest, I was actually thinking about doing um, the nails matte. Um, and I don't have any matte gel polish, so I was just going to put a top coat on and then buff the surface. So, I guess we shall see what it's going to look like. So hopefully everyone that watches this is doing really well um, and not um, having anyone sick in their family or anything like that with this whole stupid virus. And another thing you guys, if you guys are painting gel polish on your nails always make sure that you got a cleanup brush with some rubbing alcohol because you do not want there to be gel polish down in the in your cuticles at all okay so make sure that you clean that up. Okay, I'm gonna cure those. I really wish there was someone on watching right now because I would definitely ask you what I should do on this, these two accent nails. I'm still thinking chrome. I just want it to be basic AF because like I said I broke my nail and I just really I can't um, put a fake nail <coughs> excuse me on that finger if it's broken I haven't even been able to take the acrylic off of it yet because it was so painful um, but after it heals about a week, then I was going to take the acrylic off and put like a super short nail on it just to protect it because I can't keep wearing this bandaid with this tissue. And the reason why I have tissue is because I want it to be like built up at the end just in case I bump it. I do not want, um... I do not want um, it to get hurt again. I am missing my, oh crap. I am missing my top coat, you guys.
So, I am using my lamp as a nail uh, stand for my hands. Because I do want to, well, I did want to buff the nails and make them matte. But I'm thinking about um, buffing the darker ones, maybe. And maybe leaving the other two for the chrome. Seems like this light takes forever and it's only a one minute light. But boy, does it seem like it takes forever. Okie dokie. Now that part is done. We are going to get our little applicator doohickey. After we clean up the dust. By the way, I always vacuum after I play around with my nails, so don't think I'm just some slob that pushes everything off onto the floor. I will literally be cleaning that up when I'm finished. Okay, now. We're taking this Born Pretty chroming powder it's just the mirror powder, um, number two. But I will say this, guys, not a lot of people tell you this. When you are doing chrome or any kind of, like, chrome nail polish, um, 
any of that like shiny super shiny um, colors it will show every boo-boo and lump or bump or anything that is on your nails so I don't know if you guys can see probably not but that's what it looks like I think it's really cute and I will definitely take some pictures and show you guys what it actually looks like outside okay let's close that up do another round of top coat Now I always go through and make sure I kind of stick my nail down in my cuticle like so to make sure I do not have any top coat in my cuticles. Because we do not want that. Okay. Here for our last minute. Okay. This is the final product, you guys. As you can see, none of it's on my cuticles. The shape is good. Shape is good for all of them. The underneath side's good. Underneath side's good for the thumb. So, that is how I created my short chrome and nude almond nails, guys. Hopefully you liked it. I will see you next time. And bye. Enjoy your day. I love you. You've got this. Have a great one. And you are the best, baby.